The Lennon sisters were America's sweethearts. And my special guest is the firstborn of that illustrious quartet. Please welcome Dee Dee Lennon. Hi, Mary Lou. Hi, Dee Dee. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. What do you think when you look back at this show from 1967? Oh, my. I look at all those wonderful faces of people that are gone and people that we worked with for all those years and were so good to us. We were little girls when we started, and all the band members were like, brothers and uncles and took care of us and I looked at those faces and oh it kind of brings tears but it brings a lot of happiness too. Well when you did join the show in 1955 America sort of thought of you collectively as those beautiful little girls mm -hmm. but you were actually 16. I had you were just a young woman. turned 16. Uh, was that hard for you? It was hard in some ways. Uh, I had just turned 16. I was a junior in high school and Janet was nine, and so when they dressed us for the show, they tried to keep us young, and I had sometimes had to wear things that I probably would not have worn <laughs> off the show. But they kept us, you know, looking like a quartet, which we were, and it, it was hard. Sometimes we sang songs, uh, like on Easter, uh, we sang Here Comes Peter Cottontail and skipped around to Toadstool. <laughs> but my friends at school knew that was my job, you know, we, we were the oldest of 11 children, and we had to have a job to help out, and that was my job. So I did it, and I enjoyed it, and met a lot of nice people. But sometimes it was a little embarrassing. Well, Peggy and Kathy and Janet all met their future husbands on the mm -hmm. show. How did you and Dick meet? Well, thanks to his brother Jimmy, his younger brother Jimmy, who had asthma. They moved from <laughs> Buffalo, New York. The doctor said, you better move from Buffalo and go to California or Arizona. So his family of eight, Dick was the oldest of eight, moved to Venice, California and moved across the street from my grandmother, Lennon. And every one of his eight brothers and sisters went to school with one of my brothers and sisters. <laughs> so we were bound to meet, even though Dick was two years ahead of me in high school. And I dated his younger his younger brother, who was my age. But that's how we met. And uh, I was 17 when we started dating. And I knew right away he was the one for me. So that's that's how we met. And you were married on the anniversary. Yes, we had our first, first date, date was uh, October 16th of 1957. And we were married October 16th of 1960. Now, that sounded like the social event of the century. You have to tell it us about was, that. It was. It was. Well, because Dick was the oldest of eight, and I was the oldest of 11, and we had big families on both sides. He was working for the telephone company in California and had all these friends. We had all the friends at the Welk Theater. And so we just had so many people at our wedding. But at How that many? time, <laughs> well, I think there were close to 1,000. It, it was a lot of people. But we couldn't let people we didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings you know sure. so every we invited everyone we knew <laughs> and it was uh at that time you could not get married on a on a sunday in the catholic church and we wanted to have this big catholic wedding because we've been raised catholic and so we had to get a dispensation from the Cardinal at that time because the Lawrence Welk show was taped on Saturdays <laughs> and so I couldn't get married on a said no one would be able to come so we got the dispensation and we were married on a Sunday which was really really unusual and your reception I understand was at the Aragon a familiar ballroom. spot it was and uh, the owner of the Aragon ballroom told us he would like for us to use it for our reception and so it was really beautiful we were very very fortunate now, you told me you'd always wanted to be a wife and mother. Mm hmm I did. My whole life, that's all I ever wanted to do. And that's what I basically am, and I, I just love it. Uh, when we got married, we wanted to have a family right away. And I was told I pr probably couldn't have any children. So we adopted and nine, Mary, darling little Mary. We saw her at an hour and a half old and we brought her home in a day and a half and then nine months and three days later we had Dee Dee <laughs> and 18 months later we had Tommy <laughs> so I had three and 27 months after being told I would never have any <laughs> well at one time we more than just maternity leave you actually left the show for a while I did uh, I left when I got married 
I didn't want to perform anymore, and Dick and I talked it over, and he was working, and we just said, no, I, I just want to stay home. And we did that for two and a half years, and then when we adopted Mary, Dick's company, the phone company, went on strike, and we were afraid that they would not let us have final adoption papers if neither of us was working. And he was on strike for several months. So I, and then I found out I was pregnant. And we said, we just got to keep our baby, you know, our, our Mary. So Mr. Will called. And he, he heard about it from my sisters. And he called and he said, would you consider just coming back and doing just the Saturday shows, the TV shows? I said, yes, I, I do that. I said, but I don't want to travel. And he said, no, you don't have to travel. Just come back and do the TV shows. And that's how I came back on. Well, at one time, you and Peggy were actually pregnant at the same time. We were. Uh, she had Chris, and I had Tommy. And we were six, they were six weeks apart. And at that time, we were working at the old Welk Theater. It was in black and white. And they switched us over to the Hollywood Palace while they changed the studio to color. So we were at the Hollywood Palace, and the Hollywood Palace was not built for TV, and all the dressing rooms were way upstairs, and Peggy and I were pregnant, and it was really hard. There were no elevators, and I so... I remember that. Yes, <laughs> and so there was a lot of stairs to go up and down, and so the crew, God bless Eddie Holland and all of them, <laughs> they built us a uh, our own dressing room, and they called it the Stork Club. <laughs> and they painted a stork on the front, and Peg and I, I've got pictures of the two of us, and that was our dressing room. And that was just so sweet that they would even think about that, you know. Well, you were the firstborn in the family, mm -hmm. not just of the Lennon sisters. What was it like to be the oldest of 11 children? I loved it. I really did. I know some people think it's a chore and you get a lot of responsibility, but I think because I always loved children, and Mom was so wonderful sharing the kids with us. I mean, it seemed like she was always pregnant and she was always bringing home a baby, but <laughs> we just loved the babies. Uh, it was just a, a wonderful thing to experience each and every one of those children. And the last uh, eight brothers and sisters were born in 10 years. So, and I was in high school for most of that. And so mom was just, oh, it was wonderful. We got to just share the babies. You told me there was a time you were like your dad's boy. I was, because he had four, bo four girls first and wanted a boy. So I was his boy, and I used to go play golf with him early in the morning before school when I was six. Uh, we went to every UCLA football game, Rams football game. I was his boy, and I really enjoyed that. That's, I really thank him for giving me a great love of sports, because now Dick and I have that together. You were always a California girl. Was it? tough to make that move to Branson? You know, we thought it would be tougher than it was. Uh, when they asked us if we would come, when Larry called us and asked us if we would go, everybody thought Dick and I wouldn't do it because I was teaching kindergarten at the time and I loved it. I was home by noon every day and we get on, and he was retired and we would get on our bikes and ride down to the beach. And we were just loving it. But when uh, Larry said, well, your kids could come and perform too because we said we don't want to leave our kids. So we asked our kids and they said, let's, let's give it a shot for one year and see what happens. So we came to Branson and Dee Dee and Tommy both ended up marrying people from there and starting families. Well, you just don't leave your grandchildren. What did Lawrence teach you? I think he taught me to always do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. He always, you, you were ready, you did your job, you were prepared, you couldn't not be prepared. You know, it was, this is when we're going to do it, and you had to know every line of every, he didn't have cue cards for us. I think he prepared me to just say, hey, this is my life, do the best you can do with it. Be ready for whatever happens. Is there anything you'd still like to accomplish that you haven't done yet? Oh, I think I've done so many things. I've been so lucky. Uh, I got to teach kindergarten, which I really enjoyed. But if I had to say one thing besides being a grandma now and just loving all that, I think in the very, very back of my mind someday I'd like to open a little bookshop with a bakery upstairs or something, and I'd like to have people come by and read old books, and I'd like to bake the things, and I don't know, just visit with people.
I think that that would be way in the back of my mind someday. Oh, I'd be there in a heartbeat. (laughs) I'm so glad you were here today. Oh, thank you, Mary Lou. Thank you so much. You're welcome.